what do you think you bring as far as style and maybe how you uh, fit Balance, a uh, person that's going to bring tremendous effort, and the guy that's going to lay it down the line for his team. Yeah. Good to feel wanted, I mean, for a team to claim you. And oh, it was a blessing. Show. It was yeah. a blessing. Um, you know, anytime where a team feel like they have value in you, it's a blessing. Um, unfortunately, Arizona felt like there were no more value in me, so it's it's a blessing to to still have 31 teams to go out there and, and select you. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm happy to be here in Tennessee. Really, yeah. Yeah. This so I do a different color every year, and I stuck with blue all year, and just so happened this match perfectly with my new team. You said that Arizona didn't see any value. Anymore. That, yeah, anymore, anymore. Do you take that personally? What kind of chip do you carry coming in? I always had a chip on my shoulder, man. I've been a backup in the league for a while. Um, this year is probably my first year. They they actually allowed me to, to spin and to go out there and perform, and I did a good job. Um, unfortunately, you know, they was looking at certain things there in the back end, but uh, I'm just here to hit a ball, hit them, help my team win, and here to just go hard for my teammates. Um, and to, 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 Anybody yeah. here that you know beforehand? Oh, yeah. Terrell came and played with Terrell. Uh, Tay Godwin, uh, he on the practice squad, but know him. Um, I think just those two guys. But at the end of the day, football is still football. Um, I love the locker room. I love the guys in the locker room. And eventually, once they uh, respect me as a player, uh, eventually, you know, the, the, the brotherhood and the, and the bond are into the ground. You know Terrell, well, it's crazy to you. Have you kept up with Terrell? How crazy <clears throat> I, knew, I knew Terrell before we even got into the league. Yeah. Uh, he's from Virginia. Uh, he played at V Tech. And um, he knew, we knew a lot of mutual guys and stuff like that. So that's how that came about. How's it cr crazy that you guys end up here together? Yeah, that was, yeah. that was crazy. Uh, went, went training camp together. Um, did competing, battling, and you know he 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 won the job there at the Eagles. I ended up going to Arizona, and we just unfortunately ended up on the same team. But it's actually good because you know I'm I'm with a familiar face. I'm with a guy that that go, that's that I know that's gonna go out there and, and put it on the line for his team just like me. How much help have you play? I mean, you played. Sir. You know, you didn't play a lot this past Sunday, but mm -hmm. then you played about every snap. I mean, how much that helped you coming in, being fresh? Kind of in the flow of things. I always help. You know, the more opportunities you have, the the, the more opportunities you can go out there and show what you can do. And I felt like um, this year has been the most opportunities I've gotten, and I've made the most of my opportunities. What did it's you know about a Mike Rabel head coach team? And just you mentioned the culture. Mm -hmm. Anything you had heard before? You oh yeah, yeah. I, I I used to watch like just every team, all the time, especially growing up. But especially him, um, especially when he's at the Patriots. But just just seeing him and his culture and the way he carries himself and, and, and what he uh, desires out of his players is exactly um, a, a what I needed as a player. Um, all my coaches at every level, high school, college, kind of bring that same type of tenacity, same type of aggressiveness and, and, and passion about the players. Um, he's, he's a player's coach, and, and I love coaches that have player coaches. You know, I guess one possibility would be kind of a rotation if it comes to that. Guys, what are maybe you know pros and cons, if it, if it does come to that, what what are maybe pros and cons of such a, a system like that? Yeah, if it comes to that, um, you know the pros are obviously uh, uh, you know getting getting two guys on the field that that can help us win really uh, in in whatever way that we're going to ask them to. Um, you know, maybe it'll be similar, maybe it'll be different. Uh, but but I think it, it'll help take some stress off of both of them to whether or not they're every single play if that uh, ends up being the case. Um, and it allows us to, to give us a, an opportunity to, again, uh, take advantage of some different matchups and things along those lines. If you have some different skill sets, would, would you then be able to kind of open up everything that you have in your arsenal using them both? Yeah, I think you guys have seen that. I don't, I don't think we're too concerned about opening things up or anything along those lines. I mean, we're going to continue to put – Put our guys in a spot to to be successful. I mean, running triple option with Ryan, things like that. So I don't think it's it's anything along those lines. Um, just gonna gonna continue to try to put those guys in good situations if it comes to that. What's the biggest challenge Will that maybe handled? Uh, obviously, Malik's been the plan, you know, a little bit more than, than Will. How's he kind of handled things, that, knowing that he had a real opportunity this weekend? What was questioning him? Sorry. Uh, how has Will kind of handled knowing that this could be a real possibility for him this weekend? Yeah, um, I think they've both done a good job of coming out and preparing. Um, 
and, and putting the time and the work in to, to learn the game plan. Um, and, and, you know, if their numbers are called, doing a good job of being able to, to go out there and, and help our offense be efficient and score points and doing, that, doing whatever it takes for us to win a game. What's the biggest challenge of getting a quarterback who's never played a snap in a regular season game ready to go so that he's not shell-shocked when he gets out there? Yeah, I mean, he's played football. Uh, he's, he's been playing against a good defense here, um, uh, you know, against our defense every single day. Um, He's got obviously some limited exposure in the preseason, so the big thing is just continuing to focus on his fundamentals and, and what the intent of of each and every play is. Um, and, and it's really the same with with whatever quarterbacks out there, whether that's Ryan or whether that's Malik or whether that's Will. Trust their eyes, you know, because Malik has had issues holding on to the ball too much, you know, waiting waiting for something to develop when maybe he should let it go. And Will obviously has no game experience. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I don't really know how to answer that question. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's about our guys being able to go out there and trust their training and then really doing a good job everywhere else, making sure, um, our wideouts continue to go out there and, and do their best to win routes and win fast. Um, doing a good job up front when it comes to us being able to throw the ball that they're able to, to hold up and pick up any type of protection issues that may arise. Um, and then our runners doing a good job in the running game and, and, you know, in protection and doing everything that we're asking them to do. So I think that's more of a, a collective effort than it is just a one individual person deal. With the rotation like that, for you as a play caller, does it make it more difficult for you to kind of get into that groove of layering plays and those type of things? And then also for the quarterback to get into that, you know, rhythm of the game? No, I don't think so. You, uh, what's your communication like with Ryan this week? Are you still operating under the thought process he could still go? I mean, he's been in every meeting, going through, taking notes uh, uh, with the installation, watching tape. I mean, he's not, not, nothing's changed on his end, um, you know, as far as what's going on with his preparation. I mean, since the Baltimore game, I guess the league had 12 dropbacks and four sacks and three scrambles there, too. Mm -hmm. And it was a tough situation. Ravens defense didn't go too, but, but is that evidence that he does need that there's not enough progress in getting rid of that ball, you know, uh, in, in more of a timely fashion? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I think anybody that, that if, if we're going out there and, and, you know, don't have the production that we want, yeah, we, we I've got to do a better job of, of um, being able to get guys open quicker, you know, and, and I think it's just a, 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 like I said earlier, it's a collective effort, um, you know, so it was not an easy situation. Um, you know, having to go in and, and you know, kind of thrown into that deal. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's more of a, a collective issue, than, like I said, than just a one, one man problem. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I thought he was productive. Um, he took advantage of those opportunities uh, and, and, and earned the right to, to go out and play some more. Uh, he was physical. He played with a, a good energy, um, and there's there's stuff that that we're working to clean up, as we are with everybody that's on the field. But um, he he went out there and and you know it was it was it was good to see him. Play. It was fun to see him play, like jumping around, running to the ball. Uh, you know, played played with the, the 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 sense of urgency and the physicality that we were looking for. Did he get caught flat-footed a couple times where Malik was under fire quickly? Um. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think all of there, there was probably breakdowns along along the entire line, uh, and and you know, like I said, I've got to I've got to help them out with some of those play calls, um, but yeah. How's uh, Traylon's return to play gone? And are you hopeful that he can kind of hit the ground running on Sunday? Yeah, he's looked good. Looked good the past however many days he's been out there. Um, so hopefully he can go out there and, and have another good day of practice today. Yeah, I mean, there's again, uh, unfortunately, um, consistency has been been really the the biggest issue. Um, they our guys did a great job. There was that there two or three two series I think in the third quarter uh, where where we were able to do a great job on the run, uh, ripped off a, whatever it was the the toss to Tajay, and then Derek next play had I think a nine yard run, uh, but then the next play we stalled. And then we got to third and one, third and two, whatever it was. So uh, there, there's been flashes of that. Um, and, and, 
hopefully, uh, again, when we get out there on Sunday, we're able to, to maintain that and sustain that for an entire game. You've seen maybe from Will just I know the, the last couple of weeks he's been able to get some reps with the, the higher end receivers mm-hmm. and so forth. Have you seen any signs of, of progress even in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, yeah. I think both guys have been doing a good job uh, going out there and, and playing on time and um, again, understanding the different body language of some of these guys and, and what it looks like when they're getting in and out of cuts and, uh, you know, being a, be, being a, a good communicator and, and letting those guys know what they're anticipating versus certain looks. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, they've both uh, gone out and I, I think have really benefited from uh, some of the extra work that they've been able to get over here the past however many days it's been. I know Josh Wiley, you know, saw that in the end of the game, but how have you seen him progress as mm-hmm. well? Because it looked like he had kind of caught on to some things sure. in the last couple of games. Yeah, he was uh, doing, a, doing a good job. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, doing a good job of, of understanding, you know, his role and, and kind of what we're asking him to do. Um, I think he's a, a instinctive player. Um, you know, being able to kind of figure out just the best way for him to be able to go and, and execute his job. Um, and, and I think that's a testament to him, to Tony, uh, and, and you know the work that he's put in to make sure that that he could not only understand and, and execute his role, but earn the trust of those around him. Uh, for him to be able to go out there and do so. We talked about the short area quickness that Kyle brought when he came back. Uh-huh. I haven't really seen it, him used much in, in that regard. Is yeah. that something that there haven't been opportunities for? Or yeah, probably a little bit of both. Where you know it's we got to do a better job of staying in, in third and two to three or four uh, to where we can really let that shine. Um, you know, as opposed to being in some of those third and longers like we were the other day. So we're able to stay in those down and distances where we're able to take advantage of those, you know, short area quickness, movement skills, and um, things like that. Tim, Atlanta's only allowed one rushing touchdown this season. How, how, what are they doing that make them tough to run against? I mean, they're good up front. They're big. They're strong. They're physical. Uh, you know, Bud, Calais, Grady, um, 90s in there. He, like, they're, 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 they play hard. Um, they're physical up front, and, and they're well coached on the back end. Uh, you know, Bates is all over the field. Twenty uh, sevens down there, you know, uh, sticking his face in it. So uh, they're physical, um, and and they do a good job of, of trying to take away what what your bread and butter is. So uh, they're they, like you said, uh, the stats don't lie. They've been doing a good job in that area. You mentioned the, the potential pros of a rotation. If there is a con in there, is it that maybe if a guy gets hot? You know, maybe he still goes out to, to get the other guy serious. Is that a potential, you know, outside that regard? Uh, I guess that's one hypothetical. Um, you know, it's uh, we, we've we've got a plan for for you know if those guys have to play, um, and, and and we feel comfortable and confident in it. Did you self-evaluate it all over the bye week? Sure. About what needs to be different? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, some things. Uh, just gotta, just gotta continue to, to, you know, trust in our guys to be able to go out there and continue to make plays and, and, and not try to force too many things. Um, that was the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway that I took uh, from from the self evaluation during the bye week, uh, in in really staying true to our identity and, and continuing to to lean on our playmakers and, and let those guys go out there and make plays for us. Thank you, guys. Obviously, the playmaking that's lost from Kevin. How much of a blow is the communication that he brought to the secondary and the defense? Uh, how, how do you go about replacing that? Yeah, I think uh, guys just got to get out here and, and do it, right? We got to get uh, Terrell up to speed with what's going on, terminology, all that type of stuff. Uh, the other guys that have been here that are going to be in there got to take a little bit more on their plate in, in regard to that stuff. Um, but again, I mean, that's that's part of it. Uh, next guy up's got to be ready to go, and hopefully we can get these guys acclimated, and everybody's going to have to do a little bit more. With Meyer being gone, how much does that impact Elijah Holden's role? Yeah, hopefully he can uh, get out there and go. You know, um, I mean, he's been battling some injury stuff, so we'll kind of see where this week goes the rest of the week. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's good that he's got some work there. You know, so we got an option there. We got an option with Terrell. We got some other guys that have played for us. So uh, we'll kind of see where it goes. But I'm excited for all those guys and the opportunities they're going to have. What, what, uh, did you get a chance to talk to Kevin on the way out? And maybe what did maybe mean to you as a, as a coach? Yeah, I mean, uh, first thing that comes to mind with Kevin, man, is he's, he's special. You know, he's a special player. He's a special person, um, a special leader. 
I mean, he did a lot for this organization. He did a lot for our unit. Uh, did a lot for me in his time here. Um, I can't say enough good things about him, just who he is as a person, the ultimate pro. Like if, if you're looking for somebody to emulate in this league, it's it's him, um, not only on the field, but off the field. But the consistency, the reliability, the day in and day out, being the same guy, knowing what you're going to get. Um, not everybody's like that, right? So, um, but part of the business, you know, and we got to have guys step up and, and, and see where this thing goes. Desmond Ritter, most turnovers by any quarterback so far this season. What does your defense need to do to make sure that trend continues? Yeah, I mean, I think we got to affect them when they're, when they're throwing the ball. Um, we got to be able to get some pressure on them. You know, we got to, hopefully we can, we can uh, disguise and do all those things in the back end to make it a little gray form at times to add a little bit of time, hopefully, for our guys to be able to get home. And, and when we get back there, we got to be attacking the football, right? Like something we've talked about, turnovers, they got to come. Hopefully, they come in bunches. But at the same time, we got to force them, right? They're not going to hand us anything. We got to be able to get close enough to the ball to affect it. What has been the problem up front with getting pressure on the quarterback? The last two games or so, you guys haven't done a ton of that. What needs to change there? Yeah, I think we got to win. We got to win. We got to get back to our mentality of pinning our ears and going. And uh, we got to find ways to win our one on ones. We got to find ways schematically to create some advantages for us at times. Um, but the execution, the coordination, all the stuff that comes into play, we just got to do a little bit better. How does that go away the way it's gone away in the last two games? Yeah, I mean, I think a little bit of that probably is a result of the run game success those teams had against us, right? That plays into it. Um, a third downs. As a unit, we got to do a better job of not allowing them to be a manageable down in distances, right? You get in those third and five or less, it's hard. The ball's getting out quicker. They're they're finding guys a little bit sooner. Can't be quite as exotic as you are on some of those longer distances uh, because of that. So I think it starts with that, like being able to create some third and longer distances that open up our scheme a little bit and open up our ability to rush where they got to hold the ball a little bit longer. Um, but the coordination, coordination is a big part of it, making sure we're coordinated. And like I said before, when we get these one-on-ones, we got to find ways to win them. Yeah, both those guys have played a lot of ball, you know, between him and Terrell. So I'm excited about both of them. Um, we'll have to get them up to speed and kind of see as the week goes what, what they can handle, what they're able to potentially do for us on Sunday and whatever role that might be. So. Um, I mean, we're taking it day by day with both of them right now. They're both engaged, asking good questions. So we'll kind of see where it's at as the week goes. Back to, back to the, the pass rush and winning. Is it more from the edge that you haven't been winning or more from the interior that you haven't been winning? I think it all it goes hand in hand. I do. I think uh, the ability to push the pocket is always going to help those edge guys. And the ability to get the quarterback step up is going to help those inside guys, right? So it takes everybody. Um, I think the coordination is a big, big factor that gets overlooked at times. Like, you, very rarely do you guys see see guys win cleanly, right? Like, it's it's being relentless. It's winning with the second move, and part of that is not allowing the quarterback to step up, right? So it takes all four of them being coordinated, and all four of them being able to push the pocket, set the edge, make them step up, where they're all kind of working together, and we get the result that we want. The last couple of seasons, you guys been playing been doing anything different or surprising in the run game or has it just kind of been more those one-on-one -on -one battles you're talking about yeah i mean i i think indy for us it was in my mind they they played really well up front they were they, they out physical us they did that first game and we got out of some gaps and i think they found them you know and that that resulted in some plays um Baltimore, you look at it, I think it was more the quarterback, right? The quarterback had a few plays. They had a couple third and ones in there where you're trying to stop the first down, but at the same time, you got to be good on the quarterback, and we weren't, you know? So that added us some some plays. But for the most part, against against the Ravens, I thought we were pretty sound with, with what they were trying to do run game-wise. All the scheme, like it's a tough scheme to go against in the run game, and that quarterback element's always going to kind of pad the stats a little bit. What do you, what do you against him on Sunday. How much do you think both sides are thinking that? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've talked about this week. There's a lot of familiarity. I think uh, the teams are kind of built culturally the same way, structurally the same way. Um, 
want to run the ball. They're going to have their passes off it. They got those playmakers makers on the perimeter, um, play good defense. So I think the style of the of the game is pretty similar in how we're structured. So uh, like I told our guys, it's, it's going to come down to who does their style best, right? Who does the best, who plays the best on Sunday. Um, but obviously had a great couple of years with Arthur. Think the world of them doing a great job. I mean, four or seven games, they, they're over 400 yards, right? So, I mean, they've had some troubles in the red zone getting it in, whether it's turnovers or whatever. But, I mean, they're moving the ball and they're, they're unique. Um, in terms of kind of what they're doing schematically, they, they do some things to challenge you. They're, they're very game plan oriented, like he's going to have plays for us, you know, that we haven't seen. So we got to be good. We got to be ready to go. And it's, it's going to be a big challenge for us on Sunday. Mike said you can't yep. place to be involved in transition in Baltimore. I, I'm wondering why he needs to be involved if you're the special teams coordinator. Yeah. Uh, why it, you would send Kyle back there and why Kyle would feel Sure. Better. I mean, i got to do a better job there. Um, you know, just communicating the situation, uh, you know, making sure that everyone knows what's going on. The worst case scenario that we, we muff the punt or that the ball gets down at the one yard line, we still get the ball. Um, so, you know, it's just us communicating, doing a better job. Me personally, for sure, I got to do a better job with that um, and not put Kyle or anyone back in that situation um, to, to field a ball like that when we really don't have to. So, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to work on that stuff and, uh, you know, making sure that we understand situational football. No, uh, no. Usually, when that happens, you know, we're trying to get all the guys around, um, you know, ready for punt. Whether it's the, the what we call our gray unit, whether we call our punt return unit, whether we're going to set up some return. Uh, so, yeah, we, uh, you know, me personally, I just got to do a better job of getting all eleven guys on the same page uh, with a situation like that. Still get opportunities moving forward, or what's your? Uh, right, right now it's open. You know the competition is going to be open. There's guys that are going to be back there um, even today that are going to go and catch, and we'll make the best decision what we feel uh, that a guy can go and catch the ball and then, and then get upfield and get some positive yards. So. Still one of the options of those guys. Yeah, sure. I mean, we're he's going to be back there. We don't want to throw Kyle away, and you know he's done some good things for us. So he'll be back there, and they're going to go and compete for the job. And we're going to give the job to the guy that we feel is the most reliable guy that's going to back there, that's going to catch the ball and give the ball to the official afterwards. How long does he get? How long is doing some yeah. good things back there a sure. qualification that gets you chances? When you're doing so many bad things, yeah, like you don't you don't want to give that opportunity over and over again. Um, but you know, we really like Kyle, and uh, you know, think that he can do some good stuff. But we obviously understand that we can't afford uh, to give the ball to the other team on those situations. So uh, I don't really want to say if there's a certain time, um, but. You know, we're just going to have an open competition and see what happens. What did Kinsey do? What did Kinsey do or not do when he was back there that made you say, you know, it, we need we need to look for other options because it seemed like he averaged 12 yards of yeah. turn and and you know knew when to fair catch and those sorts of things. Yeah, and just going back, you're, you're right. He did a good job for us this year. Um, and you know, when you look back at last year too, he also had a, a muff. Um, so you know, it was all about. Who are we going to bring up of 48 people? Um, you know, is Mason going to be one of those guys that are going to be up? Is it Kyle that's going to be up? Is it other guys? So uh, we just made the decision to put Kyle back there. And, um, you know, unfortunately, it, it didn't work on the one. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how this thing leads us uh, here in this next game. Uh, Kyle, Kyle and Mason, who else could maybe be in the next? Uh, you know, Eric could be back there. Shy uh, Smith could be back there. All those guys, Colton Dow, have been out there um, getting reps as a punt returner. Is it, is it harder to correct, I guess, what seems to be more of a mental error than it is a physical? Yeah, because um, usually, you know, Kyle obviously has athletic ability to go back there and, and catch punts. He shows that all the time uh, in practice. And now it's just a, a mental thing right now that we've got to have him overcome and we all got to overcome it. And um, But it, it is tougher because you know it's not physical right now because he does a great job of going and catching the ball during practice. Um, so we just got to continue to build his confidence and build all the guys' confidence back there that they can go back there and catch the ball. What's the definition of not physical there? Because physically, he, 
he didn't catch the ball. Yeah, uh, you know, it might be part mentally because there's too many guys around him. Um, do I feel comfortable back there? Um, you know, that, that's probably an answer that, you know, who knows until you start continuing to catch the ball. Um, but physically, I mean, he goes back there, gets underneath the football, uh, squares up to it, all the stuff that you're going to coach him to do. Well, he started moving around just a little bit, but, you know, I think it was the pressure of those guys that were close to him and, you know, taking his eye off the ball. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to help him out and have him catch the football. What does building his confidence mean? Yeah. What are you guys doing to build confidence? Well, we put a lot of guys around the returner. Um, whether they catch the ball during practice or they catch the ball pre-practice, we're, we're putting, we're trying to distract him as much as he possibly can get. Whether it's three, four, five guys around him, heck, we even got the little uh, pool uh, stuff there to, you know, distract him from catching the ball. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to do other things to try to help him out. What's the process like in uh, maybe incorporating a couple of new guys and a couple of new safeties just out of the mix? They've Will they be working with you as well? Sure. A any guys that we, we bring up, they're going to be the guys that are going to try to help us out on special teams. So I know Terrell uh, has been here and was here yesterday doing some good things for us. So we'll get him reps as many as we possibly can to see if he's he's ready to play for us. What was the root of the problem on, on the punt return? Yeah. Uh, you know, it wasn't the kick. I thought the punt was really good. Um, 57 yards, had good hang time. Um, really good direction. Uh, when one guy gets out of his lane, bad things start to happen. So uh, we're going to work even more as far as doing longer punts and full cover punts that you guys probably saw yesterday, if you guys were still there at practice. Uh, we, we've covered some more punts because if one guy gets out of his lane, you know, bad things start to happen. Stonehouse speed impress you? Yeah, Stonehouse continues to impress a lot of people. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was good. He he squared up on the guy, did a really good job of making him make a decision, and then he took the proper angle. A lot of guys would just give up on the play and say, you know what, I'm not going to try to hurt a hamstring. Um, you know, usually punters don't make make tackles like that in space. So, uh, you know, proud of him going in there and, and trying to save a touchdown, which you know we gave up a field goal, but it wasn't a touchdown. So, you know, proud of Stoney going back in there and uh, making that play for us. <laughs> so yes, um, we we don't do it as much with the kickers, but you know, like Morgan Cox, he'll get in there. We try to do some offensive players during training camp. We uh, move them over to the side, but usually with Stony, um, you know, we don't really try to give him any live tackles in practice, other than when the ball gets declared and it starts going to the sideline. We we want to use the sideline to our advantage. White shoes. Johnson's gonna be, I guess, legend of the game on uh, on oh, awesome. Sunday. You, you, what do you remember about him when he played? Uh, Dynamic in, in the dance, yeah. right? I mean, I think he even showed that the last time he was here. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously a great player, and um, I didn't know that, so that that'll be fun um, to see him here at at, at the game. Put him back there? Oh my gosh, that, that would be great, right? <laughs> I don't know if he would want that or not. Heck, he probably still thinks he could play one more snap. So, so dance. yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Like I think everyone thinks they can play one more play. So, I mean, heck, I think I even can play one more play.